Hey there folks, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you could be here. Today we've got a short and sweet episode as we're talking about the variable speed control on the convection smoker from Smokin' and Smoker. We've had ours for about a year. I know some of you have had yours for a little while as well, and they are a blast to cook in. But one of the things that I'm sure you noticed, I certainly noticed it, is that when you go to activate the convection system, you have to turn that knob to at least 50% before the fan starts spinning. And when it does start spinning, it's actually moving pretty quick. And so some of the older models of these convection smokers have a variable speed control that's not very sensitive. And this is one of the great things that I love about Steve over at Smoke It at Smokers. He heard our concerns. He went out, sourced a more reliable, more sensitive variable speed control. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to install it. If you happen to have bought a convection smoker, the model 3.5, the four or the five, more than 60 days ago, so let's say three months ago up to a year, then you might wanna reach out to Steve, have him send you one of these more sensitive variable speed controls, because let me tell you, it does make a huge difference. Having the ability to have just a very light airflow inside that system versus a heavy airflow, depending on the size smoker you have, will ultimately determine the cook, how long it takes, so on and so forth. This is a no charge replacement item from Smoke It. All you gotta do is give him a call, give him your order number, and he'll verify that you actually place an order with him, at which point he will send you this variable speed control so that you can install it at home. All right, let's remove the control panel, and we're gonna do that by unscrewing all the screws that attach it to the body of the smoker. Once it's unscrewed, we're going to lift up very carefully. Notice it's attached with wires, turn it around, and there we go. We're gonna be replacing this piece right here. That's the board connected to the knob. And then we're gonna come back and attach the wires to the new board exactly the way they are attached right there. In order to do this though, we have to remove the knob and it's actually pretty easy to do. Just lift it straight up and it should come right on out. If it feels a little tight, stick a flathead screwdriver underneath it and just wedge it up. Now we have to remove this little nut and honestly, all you have to do is loosen it. So once you get it loose, you can unscrew it by hand, not a problem. All right, so far so good. Now that the nut is off, we can remove the board by just pulling it out of that little slot there. And we're just gonna move everything to the side, make it a little bit easier to work with. This is what the new board looks like. It's gonna come with its own knob. And notice they look pretty similar. One's got a smaller heat sink. And all we're gonna do here is put the wires in the exact same position on the new controller, right? So I'm just doing them one at a time, but you know, you could do purple, blue, white, and that's gonna be spots one, two, and three. And then once you have it in there, just tighten it up. I did find it easier to just go ahead and loosen the screws on the new controller so that when you attach the wires, you could do it pretty easy, pretty quick. Next up, we're doing the blue one, then the white one, really not a big problem. Um, the only issue is the two bottom ones, right? And I don't know what would happen if you cross those, but I didn't want to take that chance. So I'm just kind of doing one at a time and making sure that they're lining up exactly like they did before. All right, finally, We've got the last wire we need to attach. That's the white one at the bottom, spot number four. And as far as the old board, you could keep it or toss it, I guess. It doesn't really matter all that much. One final tighten on spot number four, and we are done with that. Okay, very good. Next up, we need to remove the nut that attaches the board to the controller. And like I said earlier, all you've got to do is loosen it and then unscrew it by hand. Okay, now that the nut is off, we're gonna reattach the speed controller and just put it back on exactly the way we did before. So the wires are to the right, it slides right on in. We're now going to reattach the nut to tighten it in place. And then finally, I'm just gonna tighten it down. No need to over tighten it here. Once we're done, we need to reattach the knob. And what I like to do is just turn that knob all the way to the right or to the left. So you either off or high, and that way you can align your direction pretty easy. So mine is all the way on high, and I'm gonna just push that on in there, just like that. And our knob is now on. So when we turn it off, you're gonna hear it click. There it did, it clicked, and now we're in the off position. So absolutely perfect. I can't wait to see how this baby operates. And at this point, you are done installing the variable speed control. But since we already have this apart, there's one more thing I wanna look at. Notice right here, where the wires go into the back panel of the smoker, that's an access point. And in the event that, I don't know, you do something kind of crazy, like slam you know, a tray onto the very top of your smoker and you smash the thermometer and break it, there could be a point there where humidity from the smoker can enter into that back panel, which could make its way up into that control board, which obviously humidity is not good for the electronics. Now this happening is super rare. I've never experienced it in the 10 years of using the smoke in its smoker. Uh, but I figured since we already have this open, we could do something about it. So I'm going to take some high temp silicone. You want to make sure that it's rated to at least 500 degrees. And we're going to just plug that hole up. 
Now we don't need a lot for this. I just want to make sure that I get the silicone in the hole and then around the hole to make sure that that area is nice and sealed up. And that looks just about perfect. Clean it up a little bit and this looks perfect. We're gonna let this sit at least overnight, better 24 hours. You wanna let it set up before you reattach everything. And what we're gonna do is tomorrow, once it sets up, we're gonna come back and put the control panel back on. All right, 24 hours have passed. Our silicone is properly set up and now we need to reattach the control panel. To do that, I'm gonna make sure that all those wires are inside the control panel. I don't want them to affect the seal when we go to reattach the control panel to the smoker body, making sure that that is in there nice. Okay, perfect. We've got a great flush sitting between the control panel and the body. I'm just gonna realign the screw holes, tighten everything up, and we are officially done. So last thing to do is go ahead and turn it on and see how this new variable speed control works. Give it a fire up. And before, I would have had to turn it somewhere to about here before it even turned on, maybe a little bit higher. And even at that point, it was very high. So let's just barely turn it on and listen to it. Very good, very good. Turning it up. Oh yeah, I like that. Very nice. All right, folks, there you have it. Super easy fix. And we were able to knock out two issues at the same time. So now we have a very sensitive variable speed control. And we do have that true range between low, medium, and high as far as the fan speed. And we were able to plug up that hole from the box to the control panel, which is just going to keep any problems from happening in the future. Remember, this particular fix only applies to older convection systems. Currently, it is November the 7th. 2024 and so if you bought your convection smoker from smoke at it anytime between let's say september 1st and forward then this has already been fixed but if you bought it before september 1st then you might want to reach out to steve like i said earlier and get your free variable speed control and then just go ahead and do the fix yourself super easy to do real quick here is a picture of the before Right, so this is what the old one looked like. In the event that you want to check and see for yourself if you have the old one or the new one, this is what the old one looks like, and this is what the new one looks like. Notice the heat sink is definitely a lot smaller. Another way that you can tell whether or not this fix has been done is that the hole that we plugged up has already been plugged up. So if you remove that digital control box and you notice that the hole already has been filled with a silicone, well then you more than likely already have the more sensitive variable speed control. All right, folks, thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you want more information on the convection smoker, absolutely amazing unit. We do have a series of videos coming out showing how to use that in great detail because it is a literal game changer when it comes to cooking meats. The end products are absolutely amazing. Thumbs up if you like this video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss a single one of our uploads. Thanks a lot for being here. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.